So that was the leg day. Uh, it's actually later in the day now, same day. Um, just having my second meal, coffee. Um, and that was a leg day, full leg day. Um, calf raises to leg extensions. I did miss off a the quad stretch um, after the leg extensions that we do. We do like a 60 second quad stretch. Um, so basically just, on kneeling down, um, sitting back on your calves and like squeezing your glutes um, up towards the ceiling, um, which has a massive stretch in the quads. Um, hold that for 60 seconds after your three sets of leg extensions and that's that's pretty much it. That's the session, but really good session today. Um, really good set on hack squats, on hip press, um, a plus two reps up on both. So I was pretty made up with that, to be honest. Um, getting closer to the top range on my hip press now. Got one more rep to get next week, um, and then I'll shift load up slightly. Um, so I'm on like a 20 kilo dumbbell, dumbbell at the moment, um, using that on top of the plates and the bands, um, using a green band, a purple band, um, five plates aside, and then dumbbell on top. Um, the reason for the dumbbell is obviously you look at where the, the bands are, where the plates are, they're all lower down on the on the movement. So the strength profile is, is going in all one direction where with the bands and the plates, as soon as you kind of put load above on top of the movement, um, you're going to get a different strength profile. It just makes the, the movement much harder. Um, and it gets you get a different feeling out of it to where you're pressing load from up here into all the way down here um, so it puts a bit more tension on certain areas of the quads um, which I like just makes the overall set harder um, just means that I can reach failure instead of having to do a top set of 15 to 20 um, you know I'll get to 12 and then increase the load increase the dumbbell as well um, so that's the problem with that. Hack squats, we're just working away on that. Um, got nine today, so we've got three more reps to get um, before I kind of tackle six plates again. Um, I'm just taking my time on this. I'm not rushing into six plates. Um, I had two to three weeks where I probably hit six plates aside too soon. Um, obviously, since then, like you've seen on the video, I've added a pause in at the bottom of the hole just to kind of make the session the set harder um, and means I can use slightly less load but allow the body to adapt to the load so that when I come down to do six plates eventually in a couple of weeks um, I should be a bit more um, used to that kind of load and obviously being in the hole of the pause that's helping but I want to do you know my goal is six plates for 12 pause reps um, that's my goal um, and I really want that. The the rep range is eight to twelve, I think, on hacks. So if I can get up to six plates aside for a solid set of twelve with a pause, I'll be very happy. Um, yeah, I'll be very happy. So that's the goal with that. Uh, we're just, like I said, working away, um, chipping away at things with legs. Um, but it was it was all in all a good session with Neil with me. I didn't actually take any footage of Neil, should have probably done a few videos, but um, Neil came back in to train this week and last week, which is good. Massive help in terms of having a good training partner. Just to touch on training partners as well. Um, I think the benefit of having a very good training partner is, is hugely beneficial to your training. Um, I've, I've done periods of time where I trained by myself, periods of time where I trained with Neil for a good two years I think it was a one solid year off season that we did together which was just really really good um, every single session we trained together 
in the morning, 6 a.m. We were there. Um, and that was a very good off season, very productive off season for me. Um, and I think a lot comes down to having a training partner, someone there to push you through the sets. Um, you know, it's for me mainly, it's, um, I think there's a lot of things that kind of go into it in terms of like when you train by yourself, if you've had a, if you've had a training partner for a, for a prolonged period of time, you'll, you'll know what I'm kind of saying. Um, it's hard to go back to training by yourself um, and trying to make that work. It's because it's just not the same. Um, you won't get the same feeling. You won't, um, even though you think you're bringing the same intensity, you probably won't because you bounce off your training partner. You know, with even with the rest periods between your sets, they're distracted by the other person's set. So you're not overthinking things. I tend to kind of overthink a lot of things when I'm in a rest period. My mind just plays tricks on me and start getting anxious about the next lift, start thinking too much about stuff. Um, whereas I kind of just want to go like with the flow, do my set, Neil does his, my set and so on. Um, and when it works like that, it's just, it's brilliant. Um, you get into a good rhythm, you're not spending too much time in the gym, you know, rest periods become more consistent when you're with a training partner because you know how long they take you they if you've got a good trainer as well um who a good training partner who trains properly and well the consistency with the time spent in the set is normally the same as well so you're you're getting pretty much the same rest periods instead of when you're by yourself they'll be slightly inconsistent because you are kind of just waiting to go again um you might go too early you might go too late um and everything like that so it's Huge benefits. Probably one of the main and one of the, one of the biggest benefit of having a training partner or someone know, who knows how you train and where you're, you know, needs to know where your failure points are. If you are trained to failure, which you should be, when you train with someone for a long period of time, you get to know their training style. You get to know where their failure points are. You get to know what the set will look like when they're getting close to failure and when you should step in. So it's not like Neil's there from set from rep one to rep twelve. He he might stand back for the first eight or nine reps and then literally just come in for the last two, which is literally which is all I want. Um, and then in terms of spotting, another massive thing that we see a lot of people kind of we see a lot of people take sets from people just from walking over and trying to spot. Yeah, I get it. You're trying to help, which is great, but the last few reps are the most important reps of the set and if you're taking them from the person there's going to be issues so you know having a training partner who knows when you're about to hit failure um how to spot and just not take the set away from you um you know you, you're trying to help the person who's in the set get through that rep with as little help as possible but you're still guiding them in the way that they should be going. So if they get stuck and they stand still, say on a hack squat and the, you know, in the hole, maybe they get up, get out the hole and get halfway and it stops. There's that cue for the training partner to allow a little touch, a very, very slight touch. It might just be an inch, half an inch, but it will be enough for the guy on the, on the hack squat to, you know, finish the rep. Um, and that's what it's kind of about. Um, so when it comes down to, you know, when you train by yourself for a period of time, it's hard. It's I'm not going to lie. Um, I, like I said, I've had on and off partners, um, who come and go. Um, I definitely find training by myself when I've had training partners in the past, it's definitely harder to train by myself than it is with someone. Um, and I do miss training with someone when I have to train by myself. Um, everything loosely I just said, other things that I kind of miss, um, more so obviously just the bouncing back and forth, um, you know, pushing each other through sets. It's one of my favorite things to do is get a session in with, with someone who can take training seriously, who takes sets to failure like I do, um, you know, who has the same man mentality when it comes down to sets. You know, so you know he's working as hard as you are. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, it's not easy training by yourself. I think if I stuck by myself, 
for and never train with someone, I'd be fine. But I think going back and forth and seeing the benefits you, I get with training with someone and having them there for a spot um, just makes me miss it. So, for instance, when um, I moved up to six plates aside, I had one week where I had a training partner who was there for the set. Um, obviously, it was a bit of I was anxious for it, I was nervous for it. Um, I hadn't touched six plates aside since before my last prep when I was in the off season. Um, so it'd been a, a good six, seven, eight months before I'd done a six plate high squat. Um, so it was a, it, you know, it was a big session, big day. Um, obviously the spot was there, it was good, good set, it was fine. Did that for two weeks with the same spotter. Um, and then the, the third week I just didn't have a spot. I didn't have anyone there. The training partner was, um, wasn't there. So I had to take things by myself, obviously with me, Myself following a logbook, I am very stubborn in the fact that I will continue to write down the logbook and and you know transfer the load that I was using from the previous week to this new week and and try and beat numbers and or match numbers or better execution with the same load. I would never kind of take load off um, and never never will do that. Um, I even match or progress. Um, so. You know, going in again, still quite nervous. It was only week three of the hack squats, um, and this time was up without a training partner. Just didn't go to plan. Um, I think I was aiming for like eight reps, got four, um, failed, hit the bottom um, because just things were off. You know, I'm a creature out of it. I love my, I love my routine. Um, my routine's everything, um, and it's how I go about my day. It's just how I live, having a structured routine. It's just how I do. It's it's where I thrive. It's keeps me going um, so not having that routine the same person there um, you know it even comes down to when they're spotting me they have to be on the same side every single week um, they have to be out of a certain view I can't really I don't like to see them in the mirror kind of thing so it's it's very particular so when something gets taken away and also I'm not good with change so changes takes me a, a day or two to get used to um, and when this change happened it was on a big day leg day just normal training day and that happened I hit the you know it did drop my confidence a bit because it was like why did I just get four reps last week I got seven what is going on how am I going to be able to do high squats next week um, so I had to find a different approach I then trained by myself for the next two or three weeks um, I had to I did have to drop the load down um, and this is when I added the pause in because I just feel much safer in that. Um, and I think it's better for myself when training by myself and trying to get to failure and really taking the muscle to failure and being able to do that without a spot. Um, I had to kind of, I had to drop the load and I had to add in a pause just to make it a bit safer for myself. Um, so I'm just going to keep that going. So if something does happen, if a training partner come, can't come and I'm training by myself, Hopefully I'll have no issue with kind of getting on with the set and just doing it. Um, because the last thing I want to do is get injured. And if I continue to push six plates aside and I can continue to try and fight through something that just wasn't working. And, you know, gone back the next week and tried to get five reps when I dropped down and bottomed out at four and things like that. I probably would have got injured um, at some point, um, a knee injury or something. So I think I did the... The, the right thing and dropping the load down um, and kind of taking a step back from the six plates for a bit.